Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me. It's Jeff Gerstman from GiantBomb.com. I'm joined by Giant Bomb's Brad Shoemaker. Yes, hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, How's it going? It's going great. Great. We are here to discuss Anthem. Anthem. A game which you are the reviewer of. I guess so. <laughs> Uh, seems to be the position that yes, I find myself that's in. That's right. You uh, you took this assignment. <coughs> um, <clears throat> I have also played a lot of Anthem, uh -huh. but, but I'm interested in hearing you, the okay. reviewer's take, because you have played more of it than yeah. I have. I've got four whole pages of notes here. That's right. Uh, so let's get into it. Yeah. Anthem. It's, Anthem. Uh, it is, it's, it's it's a loot yes. shooter. It's Bioware's uh, stab at making a loot shooter. Mm -hmm. um, in the vein of a... Diablo, like a server-based yes. game. I, th I think, yes. you know, people like to compare it to Destiny a lot in broad strokes, but yeah. it seems like when you get into it, they aren't really that similar. Yeah, I mean, Destiny is sci-fi, and this is kind of sci-fi. Right. You know, there, there are robots and and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that in both. You know, it's, it's a more direct comparison than Diablo or The Division or, sure. or even Borderlands. Really. Right, right. But they are still pretty different games in structure. Yeah. This is a third-person shooter and not a first. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are definitely distinct differences. Yes. Uh, but, uh, you know, a, a shooter with missions and dailies and yes, weeklies and yes. monthlies. It is and, a live you know, game. Yes. It is a game as a service. Uh-huh. Uh, and, uh, yeah. And, and that service puts you in the... Behind the wheel. I guess it's not a wheel. But in, in the javelin. Yes, it's the, a game about... Um, it's tempting to call them mechs, but I guess it's really more power armor. Yeah. Uh, they're not big hulking robots. They're kind of a little bit bigger than people, but right. they're more sort of suits than tanks, walking tanks. Yeah. Um, and uh, how, how's that? So uh, I figured before we get into the weeds <laughs> on this game, yeah. I'm just going to talk about the things I think this game does really well. Okay. The things that I liked about it unequivocally. Yeah. Flying. Uh -huh. The feel of flying in this game, they nailed it. Like, okay. Like you... Snap, so all the suits can fly mm -hmm. pretty liberally, although there are some constraints on the flight that I wish were a little less oppressive. Yeah, um, it's telling that, uh, well, so like uh, water is used to cool off your suit yeah, so you so, can fly yeah, longer. That, that is the restraint, is that there's an yeah. over, overheat mechanic that I feel like is a little more aggressive than it should and be. it's telling it's that you, to you get some missions where, hey, it's raining. Yeah, sure. They definitely slow that stuff down yeah. when it uh, is convenient for them. Uh -huh. um, but just snapping in and out of flight like it happens in like a split second you know mm -hmm. it feels really like there's just a pop to it uh even the animations around it like you can barrel roll and the character's arms sort of flail around as you spin and, yeah um and it just it becomes part of the routine of getting around in the world and also a really useful way to move around quickly in combat mm -hmm. uh, I, I think the just the core clicking the stick in and snapping into the flight really good yeah this game I also like the character creator quite a bit. I think that oh, uh, the, like the the javelin. Yes, the, I was, was going to say well, yeah, there, so, there's no yeah, you, character you, creator. You pick a, per you se. Pick a yeah, you pick a face, mm -hmm. a human face for your male or female character, and then never see it again. Yeah, I don't know what the point. Well, there's, of that like, there's is. one loading there's screen. Like one animation. of the loading screens, I think you can kind of see it a little bit. Yeah, but even most of those, the kind of faceplate is already down. Yeah, it's weird. It's a strange thing. Uh, it almost seems like it's in there just because Bioware has had character creators forever. Yeah. And, and there would be an expectation of that, but... Uh, maybe they want something like, hey, maybe three games down the line, we have a, a different out-of-suit experience, sure. and we want to have something to go off of. It's the 10-year yeah. plan for Anthem. Sure. They're going to bring your save file back. Yeah. Uh, Year eight. Show, really. off, show off your character. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm talking about the kind of the, the suit painting interface. like Right. Especially in light of the way that some games like Destiny sort of commodified shaders and, like, coloration on your suit. Right. In two, in a way that was really off-putting. Mm -hmm. Like, this game gives you a ton of control over kind of coloring different zones of your suit. There are a lot, a lot of different materials to work with, like leather yeah. and rubber and metal. And, and some stuff. of the materials are things that they have uh, locked behind, like their grind currency. Yeah, the, yes, so I think yes. there, are, there are opportunities for them to sell sure. uh, yeah. some of the materials, or whether it's like, hey, it's metal or distressed leather or yeah. rubber or like that. And vinyls that give you different patterns that you can paint over on mm. the suit and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, all the, all the uh, monetized stuff is cosmetic in nature. Yeah. Um, but just the base... You know, they could have held straight up colors back like they do in Destiny and, and some other games of that nature. Uh, but they give you a good amount of freedom to really make a dumb looking suit if you want to. Yeah. Or or a cool one, you know. It's uh if you want to make it look like the like a Gundam color yes. scheme, yes. you can do it. All that said, those are the things that I felt were fully successful in this game. Right. Uh most other aspects of Anthem I've got some qualifier to slap on in some way or another yeah whether it's buggy or not implemented as well as it could be or right. uh it, 
you know, the flight stuff is good. The the mobility it has to combat is good. There mm-hmm. there are elements of the actual combat where you can combo abilities together that are not explained or fleshed out as well as they could be. But there is some potential there in the future if they go the extra mile yeah. to add more to that. It's interesting because it seems like even Mass Effect, a game where they originated a lot of this kind of yeah. combo ability yeah, mechanic, it's a, it's a very like Mass system. Effect was better at at just illustrating that yeah. stuff yeah. and making those abilities matter yeah. uh, in a way that that I think this one... Yeah, the game doesn't tutorialize that stuff really at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, the kind of iconography around the uh, item descriptions is not yeah. super clear. You know, once you bang on it long enough, you kind of get a feel for it, but it's Yeah, I was going to say, it's, it seems like the... In my personal experience, uh, it was it was really just like, okay, I'm going to do this ability, then this ability, and it combos every time. And yeah, so it just yeah. became part of the the flow of it right. was I mean, just managing cooldowns. There and, are icons on those uh, on items that can prime or detonate yeah. combos, but like they don't even tell you what those icons are. You just kind of have to figure it out. Yeah. Like there are different types of combos that are implied by item descriptions, but they never tell you what the differences are between. Yeah, and you'll see There's, icons over enemies' heads when they are, yeah. you know, yeah. being affected by when they're like a status effect or something. But I, but but I still it. couldn't really tell you what the difference is between an impact combo and a chain combo. I just... You know, right. this, that stuff is mentioned, but never. Uh, really yeah, there's explained. there's even an item in there that you can equip that's like bonus thirty percent to impact damage at the expense of twenty percent of blast yeah, damage. I'm not, and I'm like, I don't know what blast sure damage what is. What does blast damage? Uh, uh, the whole game has just got a little bit of an odd, overly rigid structure to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, things are different aspects of the game are just a little too compartmental uh, compartmentalized for my taste. Yeah. Uh, well, it yeah. seems like it's very dramatically like, you know, hey, you, the story section of the game yes. is almost a completely different thing from yeah. the action sequences. Yeah, getting into and out of missions, accessing your inventory, the way that certain storylines play out, like it's all just siloed off in a little bit too rigid a way that makes everything just feel a little disjointed and there are a ton of loading screens in between everything. Yeah. Uh, it just doesn't it doesn't feel like it's all kind of meshed together mm-hmm. uh, as well as it could be. Uh, also... Depending on the platform you're on, at least in my experience, pretty buggy game. Pretty buggy game. Yeah, it's. I think they've had three patches since uh, the the full rollout of the game. Oh, and you mean actual release day, uh, not early release day. Yeah, and then and then yeah, the the rollout was strange. With yeah. you know, there was people playing it up to up to a week ahead of what they considered day one. Right, and then they had a day one patch, but meanwhile. Myself and a lot of other players had finished the game by then. Sure. Um, also, I will say I played uh, a bunch of this game on PC before that day one patch and yeah. found that to be more stable and a smoother experience than after the day one patch on right. PS4. Uh, well, so, so I, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't make a distinction between platforms in terms of stability. I don't know what sure. is driving some of those things. Well, I, I will say that when they did start patching the PC version, it, it started running noticeably worse yeah. uh, for, for me, uh, yeah. for whatever that's worth. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, some of the kind of server connection issues yeah, and, and yeah, those we sorts can, of things that, you know, a yeah, networked game that in in some ways feels like it doesn't need to be as networked as it really is. It, yeah, it's a four-player maybe. game, right? Yes. I mean, you you rarely... You, you I, don't, I don't think, like, I don't in, think you in, can In gameplay, you never see more players. than four. Yeah, in, even, in, they have that hangar bay thing, and there are yes. more than four there. Yes. But um, even in an open world, I believe there can only be four players per yeah. instance, or at least that's what the, the menu implies. Right. Um yeah, well, we get into some of that stuff when we talk about the combat cool. war, but, let's there, talk about but there the story. are server issues around that yeah. stuff that are just baffling. Uh, let's talk about the yeah, story. What did uh, you, you think? It's, it's Bioware's first stab at creating a whole new world from the ground up in a long time, mm-hmm. and it's this strange mix of kind of high technology with these these powered robot suits and giant walking cargo robots and, and stuff like that, Yeah, but also sort of low technology, like the civilization itself seems like like they listen to radio dramas there are no screens anywhere that you see yeah uh there's a lot of stonework and sort of like elements of antiquity i guess it's a it's a, it's a, it a strange could, mix could be an interesting mix but i just don't feel like they they flesh that stuff out very well or give you a great sense of the larger world like, you know the whole right. game is the whole game is set in and around a fort i mean they, they do say to be fair that it's kind of on the frontier Right. On the yeah, edge of yeah. civilization, but you don't get much of a glimpse at what actual civilization is like. Yeah, there's maybe like one cut scene that shows a city being yeah. taken down. Yeah. Uh, it's like told in flashback, and I think that's maybe your only glimpse. Even that's not a long glimpse at like yeah. what, what real life might be like yeah. for the average person. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. The uh, My least favorite aspect of the, the world building and the story here is that the entire thing is built on yet another 
ancient progenitor race and the magical technology they left behind right. and the various factions of the game are fighting over who can control it. Yeah. Which if it can indeed be controlled. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, there is a kind of a musicality to it in this case, you know, it's called the Anthem of creation. There's a, a the musical aspect to, you know, there are kind of psychic people named ciphers who can hear the Anthem and, and there's, you know, you know, there's a, I feel like that's an aspect of the game. mythological really, quality to it. So it, it uh, seems like you as the pilot in the Javelin are always paired with a cipher who is the person on the radio saying, go over here and do this. Yeah. But they never say why you need that person. Yeah, they're kind of your handler, you know. They, yeah. They are able to sense things. They have a sixth sense. I mean, if you know, it's, the yeah, game has I, I a... Guess it, like, it makes sense from that perspective, yeah. but I guess like when the, when the game is, is presented, it's like, it's almost like, oh, every pilot must have a cipher. It's like, yeah. oh, is the cipher making the suit work? Like, well, what's, is the suit powered by psychic energy? What, what are we doing here? A lot, of, like, a lot of that background info, you have to dig into the kind of massive codex okay. to find out if you're even that interested. Mm. Um you know, another issue I have with the story is that uh, most of the writing in the kind of core plot is a little too lighthearted and irreverent for my tastes. I mean, it does get a little more heavy and grounded toward the end mm -hmm. as things, you know, as the, the drama starts to come to a close. Uh, but I don't know. A I mean, how, do, how do you feel about the characters a, involved? A wider in, range, I feel like, yeah. for the characters would, would have been much more appreciated. Yeah, it seems like there are some moments in the story where, you know, they're trying to make you care about these characters. Uh, do you think the writing kind of achieves that goal? Mm, like in it, some it, cases, like, like the, character turns and, and like, oh, this person left the fort, did this. Yeah, there, like, there, yeah, there yeah, are a couple. Okay. There are a couple of moments in the main plot that land not very elegantly, mm -hmm. I would say, or the buildup is not quite there. Yeah, or they kind of come out of left field or feel too abrupt. Uh, I would say, like some of the most heartfelt storytelling they do is just around the edges. Right. Some of the there's like two or three very minor NPCs that you meet later on the game that have pretty interesting little self-contained storylines mm -hmm. uh, that feel and that's little, not like a really little more gameplay human. per se. No, that is just you walking around the fort in between missions and talking to people. Yeah. Um, and picking up some faction rep <laughs> for talking to them. Yeah. Uh, but some of, some of the better writing in the game is, is, is in those, those very minor side conversations that kind of wrap up and it's not like necessarily like you're going to see those characters turn no, into yeah, major things. No, well, maybe they're, they're I think yeah. it's possible. But, um, yeah. Yeah, the uh, there is some potential in this world, I think, mainly in the dynamics between the different kind of human factions that are at play here. Mm -hmm. Like the, the you're you're a freelancer. Uh, the freelancers are basically Han Solo's in power armor. Yeah, just a bunch of, you know, like taking on contracts, yeah, going yeah. out and doing work. Merc kind of work yeah. for hire. Uh, very irreverent. You know, there's the Sentinels are the kind of stuffier, more militaristic like guards walking mm -hmm. the walls of the city. Uh, there's Corvus, which is like the intelligence agency, the, the spy unit, basically. Right. Uh, okay. And there's a little bit of interplay between those, you know, like everybody's kind of got their own agendas and they're kind of working together, but kind of not. Mm -hmm. And they start to get into some interesting kind of interpersonal dynamics with that stuff. But like, I feel like they're just scratching the surface of, of the potential there by the time the game ends. Does it feel like, you know, hey, you know, obviously this is a live game, so they're going to be doing more storytelling yeah. with it over the years to come yeah. or, or year, who knows. Um, it, like, it's not it's not a bad setup for further work. Right. Further narrative work. But I guess, like, how do you right. feel about the the story contained on in, in Anthem as it stands today? Yeah. Uh, it's, you it's know, a, it's, like, you talk about that stuff, but, like, you know, it... It, it there is a conclusion yeah at it the has, end of the campaign I mean, the right story has a beginning a middle and an end like yeah. it comes to a conclusion whether you think it's satisfying or not is yeah, is, well. is left to the player i guess but mm -hmm. but it is it certainly does wrap up the story that they begin at yeah. the beginning of the game i guess that's my question is like yeah. how do you how do you as the the player reviewer find that they wrapped it up yeah, like, like um without you know just yeah, it's like hard to, discussing it's hard, to, it's hard to talk about the end of the game i guess i i guess the least spoiler way I could put it is that some of what was going on between the characters finally started to land for me a little bit by the end of the game, but mm -hmm. the mechanics of what you do to vanquish the threat or solve the problems yeah. at hand are extremely trite. Like, yeah, <laughs> very video gamey. Yeah. It's a very video gamey way to wrap up a story. Yeah. It's uh, a, it's shooter. Uh, you do but, some shooting. Yeah. But, um. uh, you know, I, I had, as much as I, I found the tone of the writing kind of off-putting early in the game, I, I had come to at least somewhat uh, care about a couple of the characters and, and mm. things that were going on there. All right. Um, 
And then they do uh, kind of post credit tease yeah. some of the the next stuff. It's a weird situation, I guess. I mean, we're kind of getting used to this idea that every AAA game is an ongoing game now. But Seems... they've put out they've put out their roadmap, same as every other game now puts out a roadmap. Right. Uh, but theirs is very story content heavy, which is something that I feel like you don't see a lot of. Right. Like most of these games, it's like, hey, new events, new modes, new weapons, mm -hmm. new mechanical stuff. But they are pitching like. I think they literally use the phrase ongoing narrative. Yeah. Like the first... Which is weird because it seems like of the games that are doing this, this is a game that very dramatically needs new weapons, new events. Yeah. New, like, <laughs> like the, sure. Yeah, we'll like get that into that stuff. stuff but uh, but yeah, they're, like, they're literally referring to their first major content drop as Act 1 right. of an ongoing story. So in that sense, the post-credits tease, which has very little to do with the actual story that you have just played through. In yeah. fact, it's it goes off in a pretty different direction. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a cool setup for, like, to me, it kind of came off as almost, well, you would need to know that all this content is coming. I, I will say if this was a self-contained game and you just expected there to be an Anthem 2 in three years, right. and they dropped this at the end, it would be infuriating. Right. But knowing that more story is coming in like a month, yeah, it's yeah. kind of a neat little like it's almost like a next time on Anthem kind right, of like thing. A, it has more of a TV show yes, vibe. Yes, it's because because I know they will follow up on this in four or five weeks. It's, yeah, it's kind of a neat. I mean, like they introduce what seems like a major new character in the last like ninety seconds of the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but knowing that that stuff. But again, like who knows what kind of resources they're going to throw at this ongoing content? Like, right? If, are if they going to go is, back? If this is a full fledged campaign over these three acts or right. something, like, then... are they going to go out and get all the voice actors back in the booth and and yeah. really do it up properly, or is it just going to be some really cookie cutter missions? Or is it another like, hour knows? of content? Yeah, like, it's it's hard to say how that stuff's going to go. At but... times, when you look at the difficulty settings and stuff, and as we kind of get into some of the gameplay stuff, it it seems like that they they built it like Diablo. Where it's got these, you know, multiple tiers of the highest difficulty setting yeah. that they call Grandmaster One, Two, and Three that you yeah. can't you can't get to until you've hit the the level cap, which to me implies that they are thinking that this is a game that you want to repeat play mm, and don't. want to repeat these missions. Yeah. Um. Which I yeah mm. yeah it is actually now that you mention it, it is like Diablo in more ways than I think I had even thought about mm -hmm. like in that. It very much has that loop of you're in town, yeah. you go out and do a mission, you pick up a bunch of loot that you can't use on the spot, you have to go back to town to, in essence, Ident identify yeah, basically, it yeah. before you can do anything with it. Right. So it very much, mm -hmm. more than most modern loot games, has that loop. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's kind of that's that's some of the rigidity that I'm talking about. Well, you know? yeah, I guess like, like it, feels, it, it goes it feels further of... than that, where like you can't change your loadout, or if you you've, anything you find in the field is an unidentified item right. that you can't do anything with until yeah. you get back. So you, you know, really in can't Diablo, even look you can... at an inventory. Right. While you're yes. Out there's there. no inventory. Like, it's it's, it's kind of strange. Uh, and at the end, it tells you what you picked up. Yes. Uh, yes. And then you can go and equip it. But if you end up going out on a mission and accidentally forgot to equip your stuff, mm -hmm. you're like, oh, I have to quit. Go back to town. Yeah. Change or my loadout. If you've gotten new abilities and you want to see how they work together. Right. And you go You're out like, and oh, realize don't, you don't like yeah. them. Like you've got to load back into town. And again, the loading screens are pretty long. It's, yeah. it's, it is a, it is more cumbersome and tedious than it needs to be. Yeah. Um, uh, but four classes. Yeah. Once you're out there fighting, uh, again, the flight is the best part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, there are four classes. It, the way they roll them out is a little strange because you pick one at the beginning of the game and then it's several hours before you get another one. Mm -hmm. And trying to think uh, yeah as as of finishing the game i still had not unlocked the fourth suit yeah that'll that'll vary the fourth suit is level 26 is so it really that high i think oh, so God, yeah not even close and to level that. 30 is the cap yeah um i think i finished the campaign at level 21 yeah, it'll and depend i had on... done the overwhelming majority of side content yeah I, I played a lot of that on one platform and then moved to another so i was like level 17 or 18 when i finished the story it'll depend yeah. on like what difficulty you play on and how much of the side stuff you do mm -hmm. but the bigger issues with the way the suits roll out is like you don't get to try them out beforehand. Right. You just read a paragraph description and kind of decide that sounds good. I'll give that a shot. But then you're locked into it. Did you feel uh, that the difference between the suits were like dramatic enough for that to be meaningful? I think it, so. It seems like the Colossus, the heavy suit is is the one that is the most different. Well, it has two yeah, weapons. It's the, and the shield yes, thing. Yeah, the Colossus has two weapons that none of the other classes get. Uh, it doesn't have a dodge. Yeah, it's got a, a shield instead. So it is it is the most distinctive, but you know, the Storm is the spell cla spellcaster class. It can hover for just about forever. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of just float around above the battle. Uh, the Interceptor is basically like a ninja ki kind of character. Like you get in there with swords and just yeah, way along like melee focused. Yeah, the ranger is kind of your standard soldier class. I mean, they do they do cater to diff somewhat different styles. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like they're 
they're all shooting the same guns with the exception of those two for the Colossus at the end of the day. Right. Uh, but there are differentiators and the abilities, there. it seems like, you know, uh, that storm you say is the catcher class. Like it has, you know, like it is more abilities focused, yes. but it's not to say that like every suit has abilities. Yeah, so it, it does. Is just yeah. Kinda... yeah. But you know, some of them feel more like shooter kind of gun like right, abilities right, right. as opposed to big AOE stuff and, mm-hmm. and status effects and stuff like that. But, uh, uh, yeah. So just as a shooter, it feels, this is, I know this is a really vague term, but it feels kind of mushy. Mm. I feel like the, the guns don't, don't feel like they have a lot of precision. Like you don't get a ton of feedback off of the enemies. I mean, they do have weak points that kind of light up right as you hit them, but especially when they're, when lag is, is factoring into the experience, like there's just a, there's just a kind of a lack of precision to, to a lot of the shooting. I feel like yeah that uh, makes makes it not nearly as satisfying as it could be, mm-hmm. um, and it seems like uh, the the weapons are done in types. I guess you yeah, know, it's well, like, uh, yeah. You have your assault rifle, and then there are like three different types of assault yeah, rifles. So the, the, the guns, the guns are also very regimented. It's, yeah. yeah, there's it's to me it, assault it, rifles, light machine guns, shotguns, sniper rifles, a couple heavy of, pistols, machine yeah, pistols, a couple kinds of pistols, and there's three of each type. Yeah, uh, kind of, that are all kind of like this one's. Faster fire rate, but less accurate, up to slow fire rate and more accurate. Yeah. You know, like that kind of stuff. Uh, but the guns, I feel like the guns just don't have a lot of personality to them. They're right. very drab looking. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all just like kind of generic looking military fare. Uh, and I guess like the, maybe this is the time to talk about this. The, the way the loot works mm-hmm. is that you're kind of getting ability drops and gun drops and all the other stuff. But the abilities are the abilities. Yes. It's not like a higher level version of a gun works differently it just the numbers are higher yes. so and 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 those drops are tailored to your character level in a way so that you're kind of always getting updated versions of the same stuff and so More or less yeah the gameplay doesn't necessarily change dramatically from start to finish yeah i think it's on you to change to a yes. different suit yes. or or something like that uh, to, to vary it up for just, yourself just at a glance per class in the menus it looked like each class has roughly about 12 ish probably a dozen abilities that yeah. can drop um You've got some support stuff, like each class has a kind of a sort of a, a not a not a passive, but like a defensive ability, I guess you'd yeah, call like it. Like sometimes sometimes it's a shield wall, or, sometimes yeah. it's a uh like a, a bubble that speeds up your ability to recharge rate. Or, yeah. You know, just or, hey, like you, you do twenty percent more gun damage yeah. inside the muster yes, bubble or yes. you know, whatever. So some some of those are some of those are unique to the classes mm-hmm. uh, as well. Um but uh, the other thing I was going to say about the way the suits unlock is that by the time you get like your second suit and especially your third suit, you just kind of, at least I felt invested enough in the suit I was already playing in terms of the stuff I had accrued for it mm-hmm. that I didn't necessarily feel like switching. Yeah. And you can uh, craft stuff There's as crafting, well. but unlocking actually valuable crafting recipes is a really arduous process that is more than a little grindy. I They've mean, tied it to faction yeah, rep. Yeah, it's based on faction rep and they don't even come out and tell you exactly what activities you should be doing. Yeah to uh, rank up those factions and it just takes a while um like by the time i got my level 16 suit uh i still only had like common crafting blueprints for it so when oh. i switched over to it i had to just make a bunch of grays for it basically yeah. and then and when you know like when you, run, missions, when you run one or two missions with you it start, you start to get your you start to get drops for it but like one of my ability slots after like four or five missions i had still never gotten a drop for that slot huh. so i just had a crappy gray item in it yeah. when i was like two missions from fi- finishing the game right like you just feel ha- hamstrung at yeah that point. it's it, i think by the time i had finished the pc version of the game i had hit faction level three which is the highest level uh with the freelancer faction but not the other two mm-hmm. i was level two with the other ones so it's like i could build i think rare recipes also i guess maybe it's worth talking about as we kind of talk more and more about the loot it doesn't seem like item rarity is real in the way, in the way that you in the way that you kind of think of it in other similar yeah. games where like oh the color coded drops are it's rng it's yeah. loot based instead it's more like as you as you level up and equip more items and get more powerful the drop the the drop rates turn from like yes. oh now i'm only getting commons to now you're only getting uncommons it's, it feels, and then suddenly now i'm only getting rares it feels like a very artificial ramp up yeah. to rarity yeah like you said the game starts out with you getting pretty much all commons after i don't know let's say level eight or 10 or something, you start getting a lot of greens. Yeah. Uh, then a few more levels after that, you start getting a lot more blues. That That is not true in the opposite direction. I mean, you still keep getting grays and greens after you're starting to get a lot of blues. Right. So at that point, it feels more like a real loot game because you are getting randomness up and down. Yeah. But early on, it's all down. Early and on, it's, it's all 
low tier stuff when like you should be you should occasionally get yeah. something. Yeah, I mean that cool. is that is part of the excitement of the random yeah. number generator is that at level three, oh my god, I just got a blue item. This, yeah, this is I guess cool. I guess it's that feeling of just like nothing, <clears throat> nothing I ever saw in th my time with the game felt like a cool item. It yeah. was just here's a slightly higher level thing. Of yeah, because a version of the thing I could have crafted, whatever. Or yeah, because you are potentially seeing most of the guns, most of the abilities early on. You're yeah. just getting higher numbered versions of those yeah. for the rest of the game. And so they do have tiers of rarity that exist beyond the those that I guess, you know, are are designed for people that play up to the level cap and yeah. all the other stuff. So you said you finished the campaign at like level 16. Well, I finished I, around 21. Yeah, again, I when, when I, I played a lot of the game on PC and by the time I switched right. to PS4, yeah, yeah. I did not redo a lot of the side missions. I guess, so. But my, my point is though that like you, the level range you are likely to finish the game at is oh, yeah. necessarily oh. near the level yes. cap. Yes. And it seems like a lot of that higher tier rarity where the, the guns suddenly start maybe having like a unique ability yes. on them or something like that are things you're not going to see in your time with the campaign. Yeah, you were going to run out of content hours and hours before you could ever get to that point. Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of in-game content is a whole separate issue. Um, Which I think is a really strange way to do. It's just a weird way to do loot. When you think yeah. about other loot games, you know, we, we talk about the similarities to Diablo and stuff like that. Like they, it sounds like they turn up the drop rate on the highest tier of rarity uh, if you go to that hardest difficulty, but you can't get that until you hit the level cap. Right. So it's this weird thing of like, hey, play this game, then grind a bunch on this game, and then maybe we'll let you see loot that is slightly different from the stuff you've been playing with. It, it's a very odd, it's a very odd thing. Yeah. Uh, and maybe this is the time to note that they, as of this recording, I guess today, have made some slight changes to the way loot, like some of the bonuses yeah. on loot work. Yeah, I itemization is obviously the thing they are paying the closest attention to and yeah. are able to tweak the fastest because the game's only been out for about a week or right. a lot less than a week yeah. at the time of this right. on some platforms. Or, or two weeks, depending yeah. on... Yeah. Um, but that does seem to be the category of the game that needs work that they are most easily able to kind of fiddle with knobs and levers on mm. to, to improve things. Um, you know, there, there was a problem <laughs> throughout the game where items drop with perks that are not relevant to that item or potentially to any other item that you have equipped. Yeah. Like you'll get, uh, I want to say you will get guns that have perks on them for other types of yeah, guns. Yeah, you'll get like, here's an assault rifle that's like bon bonus 8% shotgun damage. Right, right. And it's like, I You're don't like, have any good shotguns right now. Like, I'm going to equip this gun because it's good for my level, but this perk is meaningless. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the things they have flat out said. Like, all right, guns are no longer going to drop. Like, everything that drops will either have a perk for things you are using or for your general class. So yeah. they Which are, is an improvement, yes. but I, I think yeah. the, the, the discussion about like, hey, you have to play dozens of hours of this game to get to the point where the loot might seem different than yeah, it did in I the mean, first yeah. hour. Yes. That's, I, th I think there's a larger problem. Yeah. I, th I think there's yeah. a larger problem. There. Yeah. I mean, that, that is some loot design and also some lack of in-game in content yeah. uh, um, play there. But uh, the, uh, the general flow of the campaign gets really repetitive. Mm -hmm. like, like I said, uh, you're kind of... Like, loot and gear activities are very much confined to the story area. Once you're out in the world, you can't change any of that stuff. Yeah. It's a lot of back and forth of going through loading screens to kind of do the loot stuff you want to do. But once you're out in the world, the story mission objectives are pretty similar from mission to mission. Mm -hmm. uh, that You know, it's, it's typically fly to an objective marker, kill the enemies that are there, activate a thing, mm -hmm. fly to the next objective marker, kill the enemies that are there. Yeah. Kind of do that like three times per mission. They, they throw in a little bit of variety, like some spots you have to hang out in a small zone and defend for three or five minutes. Some areas you have to like pick up a few items and drop them into a receptacle before you kill the enemies. You know, like there are a few. Yeah, it, like like some twists on yeah. that. It yeah. seems like they in a, a couple of spots they get into some light puzzle solving. Yeah, there are puzzles here and there. Uh, although it's So it's it defaults to always matching you with players. Yeah, I will say in the first couple of weeks of release, I've never had it take more than like 20 seconds to find three other players. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can play the missions by yourself if you want to. Uh, but some of the puzzle solving they've integrated into the missions is a little strange in a situation where you're probably not talking to the strangers that you're playing with. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time that stuff just devolves into people brute force mindlessly yeah, like spinning podiums and stuff and spin these things until yes. the door unlocks. Yeah, because and... you're not communicating with right. each other. Yeah. Uh, so that, that stuff's a little strange. Um, but just the, 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 
the missions are very similar in format. Mm -hmm. You know, you're really doing a lot of the same stuff. And how do you feel about enemy variety? Do they... (sighs) Mm, the baseline enemies for each faction are pretty similar. They're all, they all just kind of stand there and shoot at you. Mm. Uh, even though like, like one of them is an evil empire faction. One of them is like a giant bug or um, they're not giant bugs. It's a strange, it's tiny bugs, it's tiny bugs in trench coats sneaking into movie theaters. Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but all these factions, like the baseline enemies are just kind of soldier esque enemies that kind of juke left and right a little bit, but yeah. largely just sort of stand there and run around and shoot at you. Um, there's a little more variety and as you get up into the higher tier, like more difficult enemies, but even there, you're not going to see a whole lot yeah, of different it, stuff. It seemed like maybe there are only like two or three enemies in, in the game, yeah. enemy types that are like, okay, this is like kind of presenting boss, some form of challenge. Sort of boss-esque characters. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just, you know, between repetitive mission tasks and the guns all being a little too similar mm-hmm. and the enemies not as being especially interesting, like the, it, the combat feels pretty flat overall yeah uh or it's, i just i found it very easy to get my fill in a couple missions two or three missions at a time right yeah uh so yeah yeah that that makes sense yeah. um and then uh you, know, you say here that you know it's it really kind of falls into that routine like not only with the combat being repetitive but that kind of in and out like go back to the fort pick up next mission all that sort of stuff. It just it just kind of makes the experience drag more than it should, you know? Yeah. Like like you've got new loot that you want to check out, but you know you have to quit out of the thing you're doing and go back. And and on the consoles the the load times are significant. Mm. It's not it's not a light task. It's not trivial to load out of the open world back into town. I, I would say change I, out I, some. I gear. played that game off an SSD on PC yeah. and did not find like the load time still felt long. They're they're kind of they're pretty long on PC yeah. by PC standards, but on consoles they're very long. Mm. Um but uh, yeah, it's just it's just so much back and forth, you know. Like it, it just feels like, I, you know, I don't want to compare the game to Destiny all the time, but like that game lets you not only mess with your loadout out in the world while you're fighting stuff, but like literally while you're loading in and out of missions, you can tweak yeah uh, your gear and mess with abilities and stuff like that. So it just it just feels so constrained and limited in a lot of ways. And and uh, the, not, the, not necessarily in from the way you describe it, it sounds you know like like not only is it constrained, but it doesn't sound like it's constrained for a good reason. No, well, I mean, who knows what's going on under the hood? I can't well, I, I mean, yeah, but technical reasons, sure, but, maybe but, I'm but, sure, but, but that, like, that has no bearing on the player experience, right? You know, in terms is, of like, hey, it doesn't seem like it would break the game for you if no, you could no. suddenly swap to a different no, ab- ability. Absolutely not. Um, like, yeah, there there may be some like engine related reason they can't do it or server related, but I, I don't know what that is. But yeah. but yeah, as as a player. It's hard to see what is being accomplished by preventing you from doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I've, uh, I, I've got here in my notes. Uh, I, I think it's, you know, it's significant that the game has a connected singular giant open world mm-hmm. because like Destiny failed to offer that. Borderlands didn't have that, you know, thinking back on the other loot shooters in the genre. So I guess the, the uh, thing I would say to that, uh, that, that I, so you say like Destiny doesn't have that, but also like, I would say that the world of, Anthem feels like one Destiny zone. Well, that's yeah. Like, yes, I, it's an open world, it's but it's like kind of the size of that uh, Earth zone. I definitely think they're bigger than the Destiny zones, but I don't think that it has the personality of those. Yeah, those areas. Like it's it's, it's a lot of jungle. the the available space in Anthem felt uh, very small. Uh, to well, me. Did, did, I, I, how, anyone, how did you come? Because I, I guess like at some point I was like, oh well, when we get out of this zone and into the next one, then maybe we'll see something different. And then realize like, oh, there is no other zone. Yeah. Um, I I guess I that you know maybe that's on me uh, for having my expectations out of whack or something. But uh, how did you feel about the, just the size of the world? I didn't have a problem with the size of it, but again, I feel like most of it looks kind of too much the same yeah. to have a lot of personality. Like it, like I, I feel like a lot of the game just looks like Avatar <laughs> without the floating <laughs> sure. rocks. Yeah, yeah. Like it's just a, it's a kind of a lush jungle environment with a lot of waterfalls and some weird wildlife all over the place. Some desert off to the so, side. Yeah, and like, like little areas certain, that felt feel yes. like someone said, like, well, we got to change it up somehow. Certain spots feel a little more like a swamp, or there's some ruins here and there. But mm-hmm. like by and large, I found it hard to learn my way around. Mm-hmm. Like I found it hard to find a lot of identifiable landmarks. I mean, there are a few spots, like oh, that's the giant world tree looking thing, you know. Mm. A few things that you remember, but like I couldn't tell you how to get from A to B. But the game, even the game, also like never really asks that yeah, of you, right? In, in the story missions, definitely not. Yeah. Like it leads you by the nose to everything mm-hmm. uh, in the story missions. The, in in free play, there's really nothing you have to go find. 
Yeah. So I guess, yeah, again, you don't have to know your way around because in, in that case, you're just sort of roaming. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, it would still be nice to have the world just be more navigable, you know? Sure. Be able to learn your way around visually. Also, there's no way to set waypoints on the map, so you really can't even... Like in like the event help. that you were playing with friends and yeah. you said, let's meet up here, like there's no yes. real way to... Or say you're looking at a guide for treasure chests online. <laughs> sure. Because the game expects you to do a whole lot of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's been talked about to death, really, yeah. at this point, but there are a couple spots in the story where they basically force you to go out and kind of grind basic mechanics. Yeah, like kind of a, a story roadblock of just yeah. like, hey, until you've gotten this many multi kills and yeah. this many this and you, like yeah yeah uh and let me skip ahead to my notes here um some of that stuff like a lot of it so they made a fix in that day one patch so that they start tracking your progress on those grindy objective quests mm-hmm. from the beginning of the game so a lot of that stuff i kind of just had checked off by the time i got there the second time yeah but some of it is just so situational like you've got to revive players mm-hmm. and the game early on is pretty easy. So you may just have not seen any players. Like there were times when I was like in the open world and I would see the icon for a player who went down and get all excited and like try to fly over there yeah. and revive them to check off my revival quest. And they would just hit the respawn button as fast as they could. Yeah. So you respawn never, before I could get right, there. Yeah. Uh, I got to the point where I needed to open a bunch of treasure chests, but by then the game had been out long enough that everybody learned all the treasure chest locations in the open world. Mm-hmm. So none of the chests were there because they'd all been opened every time I went looking for them. Weird. And that leads you to grinding missions you've done multiple times already to get chests. You know, it's just, you just have to play parts of it more than you would like. And, and I guess like that's, you know, it, on its own, it doesn't sound like that's a problem, but, you know, taken in account with like, hey, also the mission design is intensely repetitive yeah. and, and one mission is not that different from another. Yeah. The idea of replaying stuff I mean, there are other issues. I mean, I could sit here all day and talk about this stuff, but there are issues around the edges of like there are world events that spawn that are kind of like public events in Destiny that yeah. take like five-ish minutes, let's say, uh, that will drop a guaranteed treasure chest in the case of me needing to get six more chests. Right. Um, some of those are easy to pop off. Uh, some of them I found like you would do like five minutes of the busy work of like, oh, pick up six relics and drop them in a thing or whatever the yeah. kind of the basic task is. And then at the end, they would spawn one of those high-level super difficult enemies mm-hmm. that very much was balanced for four players to fight. Oh. And if you're by yourself, like you're plinking away at that thing, realizing like, it's going to take me 15 minutes to kill this thing. Right. Uh, and, but you feel railroaded into that stuff because you have to do it. Yeah. Uh, one way or another, you have to grind that stuff out and it's just not always especially mm-hmm. engaging. And it seems like the, you know, some of that could be mitigated by if you were playing with friends. Yes. This uh, game, I mean, like goes without saying for games of this type, I guess. For games of just about any type. Well, like, sure. Hey, if, you're, yes. if you can. This game is a vastly better experience playing with people, you know, mm. just by virtue of being able to communicate with people, you know, though, if you're at different points in the story, yeah, it's not gonna, yeah, you're you know, not going to get the host will progress. Yes. Uh, you're not necessarily going to get a lot of story progress, but you will yeah. pick up character progress, but also, yeah, just things like those hard public events that they don't telegraph ahead of time. If you've got three friends there, it's like, whatever, this thing has a lot of health. We'll kill it in yeah, five minutes. You're, you're all right there. As opposed to like, if you're in the open Rome with right. strangers who are somewhere yes. else in the world doing yes. something else. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, there, there are some issues around that stuff for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, it's, it's like, you know, and, and it sounds like there are just a lot of issues, like technical issues, yeah. like straight up glitches and yes, bugs and yes, things that, yeah. that need fixing here that, Ugh. that there's a, just a, yeah, before, a lot of technical yes, stuff. Yes. Uh, one, one more thing before we get into that, just, yeah. uh, with the, to touch again on the flight, uh, at a certain point I stopped treating flight as a means to an end which was getting places to do missions Mm -hmm. and just like started messing with it in its own right. Yeah. And I think it is really fun flying around that world. Mm. Uh, At least in the spots where they enable you to really do that. Yeah. Um, Because there are parts of the world that have like a lot of waterfalls dotted around and you can use them to kind of bounce from one to the other and keep your flight going. Yeah. Like like kind of indefinitely. Like fly through the the waterfall, cool off your your suit, keep going. Like more skill-based mechanics around the flight. Mm-hmm. And more ways to, you know, like what if there were also like updrafts that you could use to get more height or to cool off, you know? Yeah. Uh, but there it, are, it seems like the only other like flying mechanic is there are turrets that will lock on to you and you can use the barrel yes. roll to break that lock. And that seems like that's kind of the, like I kind of felt like I was playing Afterburner for a minute. Yeah. The first time I saw that, I was like, man, what if there was more of this stuff? Because yeah. the flight is maybe the best thing in this game. Mm. 
What if they're like, there's how, actually, do you, how did you feel about hovering? Uh, like hovering the, as, as like a, cause you can, you, you can't really shoot while you're flying, yeah. but you can while you're hovering. The, the storm is the only class that is even worth hovering with. Like mm. I tried it a lot when I played the ranger or the kind of soldier class and I would just overheat so fast that I didn't feel like it was that useful. It ended up being really situational, um, for me where there are enemies with big shields that yeah. block all damage. And so that was really the only time that it made sense to hover. Yeah. Um, because you could hover above the shield and hit them with abilities right. and guns and yeah, stuff the, over the shield. The, the storm has a lot of AOE abilities where you hold the button. I guess the grenade on the ranger yeah. is kind of similar where you see the targeting right. area. So it's a lot easier to target groups of enemies from overhead, obviously. Mm -hmm. But again, that's the only class that I found could hover long enough for that yeah. to actually And then be it seems like a lot of the ultimate abilities will hit multiple targets in a way that if you hover really yeah. quick, like the, yes. the ranger, uh, the storm has the, the that it's kind of big attacks yes. there. It's and like then Final Fantasy yeah. Ulti Ultima spell or something. And then the ranger has like just Gundam, just like here's a billion Rockets. missiles yep. uh, kind of thing yeah. uh, that paints targets. That yeah. It makes sense to hover for, for that stuff. It, so. it reminds me, though, talking about the flight, it reminds me of the tutorial mission, like the very first mission in the game mm -hmm. where they're kind of introducing you to a lot of mechanics. And there's a bit in that mission where they have you fly through this these ruins with these like kind of columns of energy coming at you. Right. And you have yeah. to like barrel roll back and forth through these columns to avoid them. And it's kind of cool. And, and there's nothing think, like that. Yeah, the there's the nothing like yeah. that for the entire rest of yeah. the game that, that is built around the flight mechanic, you know, like it's. There's also some interesting stuff just around the magical technology you're seeking in that first mission mm -hmm. where like like you trip a relic and it makes a bunch of waterfalls start flowing backwards. Right. And you're yeah. and you look at that and you think like, okay, well, if they're gonna really bend reality around this this strange ancient tech you're looking for, like that could get interesting here and there, but then they don't really follow up on that stuff. It seems either. like the ancient tech is just used to generate monsters, but it's like Mostly. the same monsters Mostly, yes. almost every time. Yeah. There's, there's uh, a couple of minor story yeah. beats that use it in kind of fun mm -hmm. ways, but for the most part, yeah, it's, it's just used as kind of a MacGuffin. Yeah. Um, it's like a gauntlet monster generator. Yes, kind of, yes. Um, uh, yeah. It's it, buggy. It is a buggy game. Uh, on PC, it was like kind of acceptably buggy. You know, I had a couple crashes here and there and like some scripting-ish kind of stuff. There's some early stuff with like, uh, you know, one of the, I think the first fix they rolled out uh, after release was like, oh, hey, if you don't have a fast hard drive, you might load in late and, yeah. so, and, and then you're behind the other players. And so the in missions, the game wants all four players to be closer oh, yeah. together. So it spawns a timer that says, hey, if you don't get close to your you guys, we're going to respawn you close yes. to them. That is, that is infuriating. And I didn't even think to mention that during the kind of when we were talking about the combat yeah, stuff. But, and, but yeah, like it, it forces you to keep your group together in such a way that's... So my understanding is that the patch that rolled out today changes that yes. again. It's supposed uh, to alleviate to, those issues. But I, I can't say one way or the other. Uh, they, they said they just raised the timer this time. <laughs> because they're, they're all... So basically, if somebody flies ahead in your group too far, it will just pop a timer on screen and say, hey, you better catch up now or we're going to warp you yeah. to your leader. Right. Uh, like as an aside, like the notice that says you're going to get warped to uh, warped ahead covers up like the overheat meter for... For flying. Just a lot yeah. of little... It's issues a, it, it's, of polish yeah. that could be better yeah it, uh, but the, you know there were times when like there were times when i would get warped ahead to where my party or like the well to be fair it's always the first person in your party it's not right. your whole party but whoever gets furthest ahead mm. there were times when i would get warped ahead to where that person was only to find as i came out of the loading screen they had flown on again and immediately got put back in that state of getting warped ahead again. Yeah. Uh, it'll it'll warp you in and out of when when like kind of story relevant radio chatter is happening so you can miss uh, some dialogue oh, right, there right. like that stuff is just not well considered and i yeah. feel like that applies to a lot of the stuff in the game yeah i had cases uh, where you know i got to the end of a mission and you know you're supposed to land on the top of a the the whatever the the fake ad ats are called oh, the uh, striders striders yeah. yeah um and like one mission ends with you landing on that thing and all four of the players landed on it we sat there for about seven or eight minutes oh, before yeah. the next like radio yeah. dialogue that actually yes. ended the mission yes. finally came on. I had I had kind of mission objective and scripting esque yeah. issues here and there, mm -hmm. getting disconnected out of missions. Like they do have a rejoin mechanic. To be fair, oh like uh, post crash you can you get, rejoin if you get your booted session. out if you if you get dropped on the server or the game crashes. Yeah, when you restart it, they'll say, "Hey, you have a session. Do you want to rejoin it?" Mm -hmm. uh, but then even rejoining the session, like the kind of the boss fight we were on, didn't trigger properly. Oh. After I got back in there. Um, but I saw a lot more egregious stuff than that, especially on the PS4. Yeah. Where there is still a bug as of right now in the game that straight up powers your PS4 off when it crashes. 
It's sending you a very clear message. And it happened to me twice, and both times when you restart the PS4, it goes through the whole, like, hey, you didn't shut down gracefully. We have to check your storage now. Yeah. And then after that, it was like, hey, you didn't disconnect your external hard drive. We have to repair it now. Right. And after two of those, I started getting a little skittish about continuing to play the game because I was just like, is this going to right corrupt my hard drive at some yeah, point like, oh better upload all your other saves in right. case you know it hasn't happened since it's been a few days but still like it makes me now that i'm done with the story i kind of want to not touch the game again until they address that issue like that's genuinely kind of alarming um yeah that's I mean, a bad game, games crash i i yeah i can't think i think of another instance of a ps4 game crashing so hard it shuts the console yeah down. it's bizarre that's it's uh, really strange that's new to me um so that's a bad one. But uh, I saw just a weird range of issues with missions not working properly mm -hmm. in a variety of ways. That the is, the meter for your ult. Uh, that ult was an early one that is that is still still broken as of I believe as of now. Yeah, I've, I saw it on both PC and PS4 where you're in a mission and your ult meter is full and it looks like you can use it and then you hit the thing and it just says like gear cannot be used before it's charged. Like there's an error. Yeah, basically. like it, it shouldn't be shown as full, but like, it is showing as full. What yeah. yeah, what basically seems to be the case is it's just not actually full, but it's showing that way. Yeah. Um, but I like, I, I wish I'd been taking a lot more notes for just the range of bugs I ran into. You have two weapon slots, two gun slots, and mm -hmm. I had it load me into a mission yesterday with only one gun equipped. Huh. But it's worth noting that there is no way to actually manually unequip a gun. Right. Like in the loot yeah. interface, like you equip two guns early on in the game and there is no unequip. There is no, hey, I only want to go in its mission with one weapon. Yeah, I'm trying and to yet think. yet it like, put me in the mission with only one weapon. Weird. Something the player can't even do. Uh, and then I we, wonder if you could, because you, you can build different loadouts for each suit. I wonder if you built I a never new did loadout. That. I never yeah, did there's that. No re there's, I never no, there's no the reason loadout. to. The idea interface. of just like, I need a second loadout for this type yeah. of mission. Like, it's not that kind of game. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe if you someday, were super high they... level and you had a ton of masterwork stuff and <sighs> stuff you didn't want to get rid of, maybe. But um, a bunch of similar stuff like that. If I, I had like the just the general interact prompt for opening doors, picking up, kind of harvesting, crafting materials, yeah. activating mission objectives. Like that prompt broke more than once. Yep. Where I just couldn't inter interact with anything. Mm -hmm. So I had to either rely on my team to do it or... When I was alone in free play, just had to quit out of free play because I couldn't do the stuff I needed to do. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, I had some stuff around like revives. Like I, I saw, I mean, this is maybe more, actually maybe this should get us into the more kind of like online nature of the game and the server connection right. stuff. But it seems like everything that's happening in the world is based on your server connection or is is touching an active connection. Right. Which for a four player game seems strange. Yeah. I like mean, the, I, the, 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 I, I, yeah, I don't know enough about the tech end of yeah. it to know why they, but, but uh, the general feeling is that like, it feels almost like it was built for like an MMO type kind of, of like server yeah. infrastructure. But I mean, because so many of the things you do, yeah, seem latent in the way that it's a game that is constantly hitting a server. Yeah. So that's like, that, that's what I can talk about confidently is just the, ex the player experience yeah. when the lag sets in, mm. because everything you do seems to be tied to that, to the extent that when the lag is bad, like the fire rate on your gun will be affected. Like, well, yeah. like I used, I used a, a, a marksman rifle, which is just kind of a scout rifle, like a single, yeah, single trigger pull, single round kind of gun for a lot of the game. And when you hammer on the trigger, you get a very, you know, you get a very rigid cadence of bullets coming out, mm -hmm. except in spots where the game was lagging out and like bullets were coming out in this herky jerky yeah. kind of fashion. Uh, uh, I like, saw something that seemed similar where like enemies wouldn't activate, so but, yeah. but they would be taking damage. I didn't see it. So, I saw a few spots where enemies were yeah, acting. Where I, the, the biggest problem I saw around enemies was like shooting a guy and having the health uh, like having it, it kind of decrement his health. Yeah. A, a very noticeable delay after you shot him. Oh, or right. Like yep. seeing the health bar empty, but then having them kind of stay up and moving for another half a second before they go down. Yep. Uh, that kind of stuff can happen to you too, where it feels like you are getting hit by attacks, but not necessarily losing the health immediately. Mm -hmm. And when you're dodging like AOE stuff, like you think you may have dodged something when in fact you didn't, and then you lose the health when it's too late to account for yeah. the fact that you no longer have any health. You know so, what I mean? It, yeah. And, like, and some, of, some, of the stuff, some of the stuff was worse, like the first few days the game was out. I, uh, I was having issues. But, or, but yeah, lag, the, like the, last so, night. Yes, exactly. I'm, I'm saying it's, the issues are still there, yeah. but I, I feel like they've gotten better in the sense that like early on, I, I would have like a lag spike where I am frozen. I am, my position is rolled back in time about 10 seconds, but suddenly also I'm dead. Wow. 
Okay, I don't like, think I ever saw anything you know, like that when, bad. When, As soon as everything sinks yeah, back up, like, sure. oh, by the way, during this lag spike, you took all the damage you could take, and right. now you are out. Yeah. Uh, and and stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, it was a lot of cases of like, hey, enemies not responding to you shooting them until at, until they are dying. Yes, it is It is just... Or a, as they start to turn, you're like, oh, well, I've already like put all this damage into you, and then yeah. they fall over dead. It, it is it's, just generally a, an issue of a lack of responsiveness. That, yeah. You know, the... Like I said, some of the basic feel of the shooting and the feedback you get off of enemies and stuff is already not quite where it needs to be. So yeah. when you factor in the issues around ser what I assume to be server connection and the fact mm. that that can further kind of lag out the combat, it just can be a frustrating experience. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that seems like that's those are the bugs. Those are the major pillars. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those are the major pillars. Bugs. <laughs> Flight. Enemies made out of bugs. Open world. Magic tech. Bugs. Yeah. And um, then it's a, you know, we we don't really, you know, they, they've rolled out what they say their roadmap is yeah. for for updates well, and, it's and the future of the game. Yeah, they put out they put out a limited up, uh, roadmap that just kind of pertains to the three acts of this ongoing story they're right. talking about. And then after the game came out and feedback started coming in, uh -huh. they put out a dramatically more detailed roadmap. Yeah. Uh, that almost I'd have to check, but I want to say it's almost laid out week by week, mm. maybe. But it's got a lot more detail about gameplay improvements, like loot, tweaks, yeah. all kinds of much more kind of granular stuff they want to do. Um, How's that stuff sound to you? Uh, I, I haven't I haven't seen that. I'd, I'd have to go back just, and I'd have know, to go back and look at that yeah. again. To I just kind of skimmed it to yeah. see that they are out there offering a lot more detail. And like you said, they have put out this loot patch today that is fixing some of the most immediate complaints from the highest level players. Yeah, to, to me, that the average seems player like the... I don't think is even going to get there because the game, again, the game just runs out of content far before you are going to get to the level cap. And, and do you feel like it's, you know, like having played the, the game one and a half times now, yeah. do, like, do you feel like that, that, that the gameplay is worth repeating to get to that point where you might start to see these additional guns? I just, I don't feel, I don't feel, feel like it's there yet. Yeah. And I don't know if it will get there. I mean, you know, if they... If they 100% ironed out all those server issues and the game felt snappy and responsive all the time, it mm. would go a long way. Yeah. But again, you know, I just, I don't feel like the guns feel as good as they could or do in some other games. And uh, then there's some of it, some, some of it's probably a matter of preference because I actually feel like some of the gunplay is very similar to what I remember from the first division and mm. some people like that game. So it, it yeah. may just be a, a matter of preference in some cases. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, the game has a long ways to go Yeah, in general. But I, we're in this weird era now where every game is a live game. You know, every game is a game as a service. Yeah. And they are talking about months of post-release content. So who knows how much EA is going to empower them to work on this game and, and fix what needs to be fixed. And, you know, like... Right. I, like I think it, the, the interesting thing is I, I, I think my uh, kind of barometer for this stuff is like... Or, or the, the way I'm looking at it is... I feel like I've got a pretty long list of things that I feel need to be altered with yep. Anthem to where yes. I would feel comfortable like going back for more story content, going back to it at all. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and I think and those 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 break down into two lists, right? Of, yeah. Of basically like... There's the technical stuff, which I, it seems like they're addressing. You yeah. know, there's there's stuff that you look at and go like, well, that's an oversight or a bug or or both. And and those are the sorts of things like this loot patch or the, the changes they made to loot, like, okay, yeah, you corrected what is clearly some oversight that you didn't realize until you got it into everyone's hands. Right. Sure. Uh, but I think the other list is the, here's fundamental stuff that right. needs to be dramatically different that is probably, these are not easy fixes because it's, it's stuff like, hey, more variety uh, to yeah, the game. Totally. Uh, like, like more, more mission like variety. That's, that's, you know, that's design work. Yeah. That's a lot of scripting and programming. Like, it, yeah, again, like it's it's really a question of like, what kind of resources is EA going to throw at this thing now that it's out? Right. Now that it may How have committed, especially when you hear about games selling like the bulk of their copies in the first, however many weeks or whatever, yeah. you know, like I, I hope that they are committed to supporting this thing. Yeah, uh, sure. Uh, at, the, at the same time, like I feel like I played Anthem for 20 hours. Well, yeah. And, and like, yeah, so I would have to get a lot better for me to want to spend exactly. a lot more time. Yeah. With it. And, and, and a lot of the things I need to be better are just like, potentially I feel like such low level things like let me change my gear out while I'm out in the world. And who knows if there's some technical limitation stopping them from doing that. I mean, when know? you look at like how dramatically like, Hey, here's a long load time to just get from the story area to the game area. Yeah. 
And there's like even that a, sound that it, it, it almost seems cobbled together. And even you once know, you're in back in the story area where you can change it, I, you know, loot in and out, there is another load between the story area and the gear interface. And right. Back. I mean, yeah. like there's yes. loading screens just all over this game. It's, uh, and stuff like that just drags the experience down. Yeah. In a way that it, that needs to be improved. Uh, but you I, don't think it's irredeemable. I don't. I mean, the flight is great. Like the world has untapped kind of storytelling potential if they dig into the good parts of it. Hmm. Even though I think some of the kind of the underpinnings are a little bit played out. Um, but again, it's just a question of how many of these low level fixes they can actually right. implement at this point in a game that's already shipped, you know? Yeah. Is it feasible to do them? Is are, is it realistic to expect them to based on how much it would cost them? Like, I don't, I don't have, know. Have most of the players already kind of played through that content? Right. And you're like, oh, well, maybe our content going forward would be better, but we're not going to adjust the main campaign experience that dramatically. Right. Or I, that, yeah, That's I, a weird one because, again, they wrap up the kind of the core story here. And yeah. the threads they're teasing for the ongoing stuff will go in a pretty different direction so i guess that's that's uh, like yeah it, something that remains to be seen is like what happens if you get this game once that content is out will you have the ability to play it or is it just the next story chapter and you need to play through the main campaign yeah, first to get there it's tough to say i mean you kind of with the way the story threads work is like or the way that way that that stuff is told is like the the tease at the end of the game would not make much sense for a player no who had not finished the game. No, definitely not. So just although, it, although you also need to kind of spend a lot of time in the codex to really kind of get what's going on. I did there. not do that. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, there are so many ifs around yeah. whether this is going to be worth coming back to, you know? Right. If the story content, if the new story content is better than what's here, mm -hmm. if they iron out all these bugs, fix server issues, re-architect some kind of core systems of the game a little bit more than they have yeah already i don't know like looking back at this genre i feel like having your rocky launch and six to 12 months of player outcry yeah and then fixing the game and making it good is basically a rite of passage for this kind of loot game at this point yeah like diablo 3 did it destiny 1 and 2 did it the mm -hmm. division did it the thing i would say it there's precedent for a game like this getting better. Right. Is, is, what, I, Definitely. is what I mean. And, and it kind of only can yeah. really yeah. get better from here, yeah. um, from where it's at. I guess the thing I would say is that a lot of the complaints that people had about The Division and The Destinies and even Diablo 3 uh, were around the end game. Mm -hmm. Were around like, hey, once I finish the game, the stuff I have to do is underwhelming. Yeah, sure. Um, like nobody, nobody was really complaining about how you equip loot in those games. Right, so and the that's, that's that, kind of what I mean about these things yeah. being lower level problems. And, and the, the thing I'd say with all four of those games is that the core experience of playing through and experiencing the story that first time, yeah, that's fair, was pretty good. Yeah, first time playing through Diablo three, like, had a great time. You know, if yeah. you if you took Destiny one and just said like, hey, this is like Halo. It's just a first person. It's a first person shooter. Play through the campaign. Like that, that on its own was a satisfying experience. Once you got to the end, if you had expectations of it being a lasting loot game, I think, that's, that's I think Destiny down. 2 actually still has issues around like it, it as a lasting loot game yeah. personally. Um, and I think the division end game stuff, you know, they learned a lot and rolled out a bunch of stuff over time that um, made the end game better. Yeah. But, you know, you kind of had to be there for it all along, which I was not. And, and Diablo 3 changed dramatically um, in that sort of stuff. But yeah. those core first playthroughs of those campaigns and those storytelling things worked yeah and were fun yes it is a much steeper hill to climb for okay for this Th game. that that's my question is do, yeah. do you feel like this game is in that same bucket or not maybe yeah like if it was utterly bug free if it was like if the server connection was just pristine 100% mm -hmm. of the time And the storytelling was fantastic in this ongoing content. So, yeah. That's, Again, there's all these ifs. Right. Like, if all those things were in place, then, like, maybe I could put up with the load screens. Maybe I could put up with not being able to tweak my gear and test stuff out while I'm playing the game. You know what I mean? Mm, right. Like, the, some of these core problems would still be annoying, but you could probably put up with them. Yeah. If all those other aspects were on point. But, again, that's a lot of ifs. Yeah. So, yeah, it is. Yeah. So wrap it up for me. What do you what do you think overall? <sighs> Talking score here. Well, I mean, yeah, but like yeah. you know, 
there there are things I like about the game, but it just there are too many problems with too many aspects of it, and it just most of those aspects just don't come together mm -hmm. anywhere near as tightly as you would like. Yeah. So a frustrating experience that I saw a lot more potential in than was fulfilled. Yeah. I would say in a lot of ways. That makes sense. Uh, so it's a contentious decision, but I think I'm going to go with two stars for this. Yeah. I, in the thick of some of these major technical problems, I feel like that's kind of a generous two stars. Yeah. Uh, but there's just enough good there. Mm -hmm. Like it's frustrating, you know, Bioware has got a very storied history. Oh gosh. I mean, like that's, that's almost outside of the scope of this uh, yeah, conversation. I, I but wanna, the, the minute wanna... you start taking like the legacy of the developer into yeah. it and stuff, like this becomes a very different, well, that's like, a different conversation, like somewhat more disappointing conversation. Sure, but there in, are in some ways, there are hints of the good aspects of right. Bioware's track record in here. Mm -hmm. And when you see some of that stuff, and again, when you see a couple of the more unique things they are doing with this game, you know, by genre standards, like, sure. Like that, that's when it just, like nobody wanted this game to be bad, you know. Like I've seen, of course not. Yeah. There's there's kind of been a backlash to a backlash to a backlash of people upset that some people don't like this game, but mm -hmm. nobody wanted it to be bad, you know. Uh, but, the the very short time we had with it back at E3 was really promising. Yeah, like yeah, I came just, I came away going like that's wow. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We were super positive about yeah. it, and I think it's telling that we only had maybe five ten minutes to play the game. Yeah, which was just enough time to realize the flight feels really good in this game. Yeah. Like, they nailed this feel. Hopefully, hopefully the story stuff is good. Yeah, and then, yeah. oh, wait, none of it. Like, surely yeah. the loot stuff, like, all that will just, that's just a solved problem, right? Like, the, apparently not. Like, the core action has definitely got merit to it. The world, you know, has potential mm -hmm. for further storytelling. That's just, there's a lot to do yeah. on, on this game to really get it where it needs to be. All right. So, well, we'll but, see if it gets there. Yeah. You can always uh, just sign up for the Origin Access and just play it for 10 hours if you want to see what it's about for a low price. Which is yet another conversation. Yeah. Uh, uh, so there you have it. Yeah. In its current form today, yep. right now, Anthem, mm -hmm. two out of five. Yep. Thanks, Brad. Yep. Thank you. We'll be back next time with some video game reviews. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening, wherever you are. From GiantBomb.com headquarters, I'm Jeff Gersman. See you next time.